Well, guys, we are going to start our meeting. The name of uh, Hispanic Business Network. We want to say welcome to you guys. Thank you to be here. Uh, in this opportunity, we have an, a special speaker guest, a wonderful guy uh, with interesting information. But to introduce our speaker, I'm going to introduce our founder and president of Hispanic Business Network. With you guys, Mr. Jorge Rabazo. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Yes, Robert, it's a really, really it's a pleasure to have you. It's an honor to have you, basically. But, you know, before we start the meetings, most, uh, you know, we, we like to do the place of the legion of the flag. And this is the way, you know, that we thank the United States. We, most of us, we are immigrants and we, and we really love our country. And it's something that gave you the opportunity to develop our business and to... Uh, Magali, can you unmute all of us? Uh, I'm going to do it my, myself, even, even if my accent is a little weird, but I, you know, I am very proud to do the Pledge of Allegiance every time. So if you can repeat with me, Magali, can you unmute? It's going to be very nice if we all can do this. And uh, it says, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. To the flag. To the United States of America. To the Republic. For which the republic uh, for stands one nation, one nation, one nation, justice for all. Thank you, thank you. The way you know, we say thank you to all the opportunities that this country was giving to us. Thank you. A round of applause to all of us. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. Um, bien, so. Roberto Martinez, you're going to talk about launch your business with customer focused marketing. This is a very good thing to learn for all of us. Let me tell you that Roberto is a founder and CEO of Braven Agency, a digital marketing agency that focuses on skilling small, medium businesses. He's also a Google digital coach and national trainer in 2020. He has appointed by the mayor of Los Angeles as the city entrepreneurs in residence. He has run over 500 marketing and entrepreneurs workshops in English and in Spanish. On behalf of tech companies and universities that include Google, QuickBooks, Facebook, Univision, Stanford, UCLA, and USC. So you have no mistake in coming to this meeting today because he really <laughs> knows what he's talking about. Robert holds a certificate in scaling businesses from Stanford School of Business, an MBA from Thurston School of Glo Global Management, and a BA from UCLA. He's also passionate about humanitarian work and work with humanitarian nonprofit in Colombia, and he has been helping his Spanish business network to go over and to and to develop our our nonprofit as well. Roberto, it's a pleasure to have you again. Thank you for helping us. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Jorge, thank you so much. Uh, in my part of of of, uh, of town, that's called it's echándole mucha salsa al taco. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate your your very kind words. I appreciate Javier and Magali amazing leadership from the front you guys lead from the front and i appreciate being part of this organization and helping in any way shape or form i can let me get started i am ecstatic to be here with you guys this organization has been an organization has been on my radar for maybe three four years already jorge took the initiative and reached out to me and i was beside myself i i can't wait to work with this organization and this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship and relationship with the organization and with members of the organization. And I hope you take as much out of this organization as the organization invests in, into each and every one of you guys. All right, let's start. Uh, we're going to go through, let me walk you through the process. Jorge already talked to me about the process. We're going to go about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to have a breakout session. Everyone's going to get to know each other, networking, get to know, exchange information, and then we're going to come back here. We're going to go another 15, 20 minutes, another breakout session, and then we're going to end it. There's also a couple questions that's going to help us better inform the conversation that we're having with ourselves and with the presentation. 
So who am I? Porque estoy enfrente de ustedes. Why am I in front of you guys today? Well, we're going to talk about how to launch your business. Most of us are already business entrepreneurs. The best part about this particular workshop is that you might have your business already. You might have it up and running, but we're going to talk about Google tools and services that you can use to leverage and grow your business. So again, as Jorge was mentioning, I'm a Google digital coach and national trainer. I've been doing this for Google for the past four and a half years. I just got promoted uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually a week and a half ago. So I'm covering the whole state now. Um, and I absolutely love the work that I do because I help Latino entrepreneurs grow their companies. If you guys have any questions regarding any Thing pertaining to Google tools or services, reach me at robertomar.google.com. That's robertomar at google.com. Whoops. I think we have someone's audio. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. And follow me on social. There's a bunch of other workshops. I've been doing this, again, as I mentioned, uh, 15 years as an agency provider. Uh, four years with Google, with the mayor, a year and a half. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about marketing and the customer journey, how you as your entrepreneurial self and your business can reach prospective customers, how to engage those prospective customers using Google tools and services. On top of that, we're going to talk about prospective customers, how to use different tools available to you, like Google Pay Ads, Google Business Profile, to reach the customer when they need you. For the most part, we buy things when we have a pain point. If you need an aspirin and there's no aspirin, you're willing to pay a lot of money for that aspirin. How do we get in front of the customer when they're feeling that pain? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then after that, how to create loyalty. They take the aspirin. They absolutely love your service, your product. And now they want to keep using you over again and again and again. How do we com continue to communicate that value to that customer? So all of this we're going to talk about, this is your time. So whatever you guys have any questions, stop, raise your hand, chat, ping me, whatever it needs to be, because everyone can benefit from your guys' questions. All right, let's start. What is the marketing journey? What is marketing and how do we think about marketing in the sense of our customer? How do we get in front of our ideal customer? About Seth Godin and what he talks about with marketers. So you have a product or a service, you're an entrepreneur, you put it out there. Yes, it's great, but people don't buy the hammer because the hammer hammers the nail. They buy the hammer because they want to hang up an amazing mirror, an amazing painting, right? People want meaning behind what they're doing. Coca-Cola is sugar water, but it provides meaning to you. When you think about your experience with Coke as a brand, you think about your grandmother, you think about family, you think about an experience. You think about that time when you were with your grandfather or with your uncle and you were growing up and they're drinking Coke. Same thing with BMW, it's a driving experience. It's a car, moves you to point A to point B, but they're telling you, no, it's more than that. When you get behind that wheel, you feel something. There's a feeling there. So that's what Seth is telling us. We have to infuse meaning into our product. And great marketers are able to do that so that the customer, yes, I could get another accountant. Yes, I could get another financial advisor and their insurance broker. But this person that I work with makes me feel that I could trust him, makes me feel safe, makes me feel that he's not or she's not going to cheat me. Hey, Hector, I see you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, it makes you feel something. So that's what you're trying to circle in on. What is it that my product or service is trying to make me feel? So let's talk about an example. Shelling and Sharika, right? Great company. I, I just recently got a little back from them at least a week and a half ago. And so she, our, our friend Sharik is walking to work. And if he's like me, he has a grocery bag for his lunch. And he's realizing, you know what, there must be other people like me that when they go into their office, they're taking their food in a grocery bag or something in their backpack or in their suitcase. Let's create something different. So he's realizing this. And a lot of entrepreneurs like yourselves realize that you're, you're going through your day to day. You might have a nine to five job and you're realizing, man, I could create something different and distinct and unique. That's really going to speak to people like me that are experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing. And so you have a passion. 
you realize I could really speak to a certain segment of the population that have the same needs that I do. So you come from a position of passion and ideas, and you might create a product. And what's really important for us is to get that product in front of as many people as possible, as fast as possible, so they can tell us, is this product a good product or a bad product? So what we talk about is like, we might not have the greatest about amount of marketing experience, but we know we have a feeling that this is the right thing to do. So what is marketing? How can we help our friend Sharik sell that particular bag? Well, it's creating a myth, creating a legend. You know who's good at creating a legend? Our friend here um, at the organizations, at different startups. We need to infuse purpose and meaning. Airbnb, we're going to have your home anywhere in the world, right? So now you can go anywhere in the world and you'll have your home. Uber, we're going to help you move from point A to point B seamless. All you have to do is have a, a phone. Coca-Cola, we're going to make you feel happy and joy. Everything around that is happiness and joy. So what is your meaning? What, is, what are you trying to sell to the prospective customer besides the functionality? A lot of people get stuck on functionality. Well, my thing does five times better, 10 times better, runs faster, grows larger, uh, is able to do that fast. That's great. That's fantastic. But what's the story behind that, right? For myself, when I started my company, my story is I'm here to help Latino and minority entrepreneurs like my mom and my dad that left Latin America and came to the United States. That's who I care about. So I want to help them live their their story by helping their businesses grow and scale. And how do we do that? By creating relationships. Jorge is great at this. He's probably one of the best folks I've ever come across. He makes you feel like you can trust him and it builds credibility. So when he asks you for something, hey, I need you to be at this meeting today. Guess what? It's really hard for you to say no, right? I'm sure that's why Paul's here. Besides the fact that he wants to hear me talk for 20 minutes. I'm sure he, the reason he shares is because he can't say no to Jorge because he built a relationship, a personal relationship with Jorge. And he's like, man, when Jorge says something, I listen because I trust him and he has credibility. And that is the third piece. You start influencing your customer. The customer enjoys your product. He says, you know what, Jorge? It's holiday season. I didn't really want to go to that Google event, but I learned something there. And next time, I'm going to refer other people to go to that event because I gained something from that experience. And now Paul becomes Jorge's advocate. He goes out and screams it louder than anyone else. Listen to Jorge. When he says something, you need to trust him. So Jorge becomes a brand extension of the brand that is this organization. So you could trust the organization because Jorge infused his trust into the organization. That's what it's all about, guys. That's that's how we create a brand. That's how we market. Okay, strategy, 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 brand development, brand development. Let's get to the good stuff, right? Let's talk about our customers because that's really what this is all about. Great, I know how you feel. I tell this and I'm always shocked. I'm always shocked. Um, I'm, uh, I was traveling to Mexico and on my way to Mexico, I, I saw a picture and no politics involved here, but it was a woman that is amazing at what she does, but she was working a job that 99% of that job was ran by men. It was, it was a construction. And so she was dressed in construction work. I don't know about you, but I, my experience in my construction sites, maybe 10% of the, popul of, of the workforce is women. Not to say that women can't work construction, 100% they can't, but is that your target market? Probably not. We have to be realistic. Who is our target market, right? We need to know exactly who our target market is, right? So when you start developing out the brand, you always want to have who's going to buy from me? Who's going to be the one keeping the lights on? So we have to develop that persona, that customer, and raise awareness of that, hey, we're here, we exist. So this insurance company that was targeting a, 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 a certain woman, when I went to the marketing company, it's like, Maybe don't target the construction worker as a woman. Maybe target the manager as a woman. Because I've seen managers that run construction sites, and they're amazing at it. Maybe that's who you should have been dressing up as, not an actual worker at the construction site, but the woman running the construction site. That, for me, speaks more to the type of audience you're trying to get at. 
And that's important. We have to speak to the audience. And us as business owners, we sometimes market to ourselves. Sometimes we're like, everyone's like us. We're talking to ourselves. I, I had a, a marketer say, uh, I ran this particular event because it fit my schedule. And I'm like, who cares about your schedule? You know whose schedule I care about? It is us. That's whose schedule I, I care about. Patricia, that's whose schedule I care about. Carlos, I want to know when they're available. I don't care about you. You're a marketer. <laughs> You're supposed to reach out to them. But if you don't get into their heads and see, hey, you know what? On Monday, it's terrible. On Friday, it's terrible. Maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is the best time to host these type of webinars. That's when we talk to them. That's when we set up those web webinars and websites and events and meetings. Super important. So we drive awareness. And then so let's talk about that customer journey. A customer is going through their day. And let's say, uh, I love baking and cooking. I absolutely love it. And my baker and my blender breaks. I become aware I have a problem. What's the second thing I do? I grab this little device, little phone, and I start Googling blenders near me or, or convenience stores near me or stores near me. And I go on other websites that have blenders and I get to the consideration stage. Now I'm looking at different blenders. Which one do I want, right? And then the third phase is, okay, I'm ready to make a decision. This is the blender I want versus that one. Why? Price point, maybe warranty, maybe brand, maybe color. I don't know. But I start deciding on that. And then I buy it. I use it. And what do I become? An advocate for that brand. I absolutely love this particular blender. Does it blend? It could blend anything. Everyone should be using this blender. Why is that? Because it's the most amazing blender. I have a referral code. I'll refer people to that blender. So those are the, the four stages that Google recommends that we have. Now, there's a lot of different phases for marketers. Marketers sometimes talk about five different phases, seven different phases. But for our simplistic purposes, how do people become aware they have a problem? You have a toothache, you want the dentist. You have a backache, you want the chiropractor or the masseuse. You uh, ripped your pants, you want a new pair of pants, you want to go, uh, a, uh, a retail store so you can buy them. That's the awareness stage, consideration. Well, I want to, let's say I'm a business owner. I want an accountant, which is the best accountant. Do I want any accountant? No. I want the account that fits within my financial department or within my accounting department or within my retail company. And I just don't want any accountant. I want someone that specializes into my industry, my sector. So you start considering the different options and then you actually use that service. So that's a clear cut approach. Any questions there so far? ¿Todo fremente calculado? Todo bien. Todo bien. Ahí vamos, entonces. All right. So that's strategy, right? What's our purpose in life? What are we, why are we here for when it comes to our business? We develop that purpose and meaning. What's, our, what's, what's the meaning of infusion to our company? Who is our ideal customer? And what is their journey? We got that done. Now let's get into how do we reach those customers and how do we talk to them? And this is where Google can really help us. So how does most of us hear about a new product or service? We Google it. I call it Theo Google because I used to have a Theo that knew everything, right? Oye, Theo, ¿qué, qué pasa con esto? Es este cambio, es así de tamaño, así cuánto cuesta. Igualito con esto. It's the same thing with this. We have someone that knows the product or knows the service, and that's Google. So we go on Google. 50% 50, 50 of all businesses get their first web traffic from Google and 49% of all search starts on Google. So it's a big, big platform that you need to be on. Second, you hear from Jorge, Jorge tells you, you should buy from this, you should use this particular product or service, and you go to it. Advertising, TV, radio, advertising, trade shows, and search engine. Search engine can be SEO, can be Google paid ads, can be a lot of different things. So how do we reach this prospective customers? who the customer is, we build our brand, and we get them to find us online. Super important. So let's take an example. An example. We have to create our ideal customer, which is called the customer persona, and that within that customer persona, we have our demographics. How old are you? Where do you live? Um, what's your makeup, your psychographics? Uh, are you more conservative? Are you more liberal? Are you more willing to take risk? Are you less willing to take risk? Are you urban? Are you rural? Is geographic? What part of the city do you live in? 
because when I target you, I want to make sure that my ads and my marketing is targeting specifically your needs. And what is your behavior? Do you go online in the morning? Do you go online at night? Do you go online in the middle of the day? Are you an early riser? If your ideal customers rise at six o'clock, what time should we be sending them emails at six o'clock in the morning? Not seven, not eight, not nine, not 12. Because you know the first thing you're going to do when you wake up is this. You're not going to hug your significant other. You're not going to tell, hey, I love you. I care about you. You're going to reach for this little phone. And you're going to start looking on your social channels. You're going to start looking at your emails. So we have to identify that customer. So here's an example of a customer persona. I call her Erica Magallon, mid-30s, single, lives in a large city, college educated, loves fashion, is interested in cooking, traveling, and travel, shops locally. And if you're trying to have her be your client as an accountant, you know that she's college educated. Maybe you start promoting your services in local shops. Maybe you start thinking about how do I cross promote with her interest? So I go to cooking and whining and travel agencies and say, hey, do you have any customers that are between the ages of 20 and 30 or 35 and are college educated? Because I know that type, that's my customer. And I'm happy to give you a referral and give you a, a, a compensation if you refer those prospective clients. Now let's talk about a little bit about your brand. So how do we create this brand? Oh, we have some questions, all right. Alessandra says, um, then it comes Google ads, create brand awareness, and we want to know if you can control the amount we put every day in that campaign, because there's a feeling that Google pay-per-click ad is expensive, but if the click actually converts, in sales, it's not expensive. So great question, Alessandra. So Alessandra is asking us about your marketing campaign. So let's say you have, a, Alessandra, can you let me know about your company? What is your company? So I can get a very, very concrete re, uh, response to your answer. So let's say you're thinking of targeting and running Google ads. If you're running Google ads, a Google ad, the way it works is by a prospective customer sees your ad and then clicks on your ad. The moment they click on your ad, Google deducts a certain amount of cents or dollars from your budget and they send the traffic to your website or it calls. You have to know who your customer is. You have to. If you don't know who your customer is, then you're just wasting your dollars. And what do I mean by this? Well, Google allows you to market to people between the ages of 18 to 65. So if you're gonna run your whole Google ad campaign, to all those individuals, then you're wasting your money. But if you know that people are between the ages of 30 and 35, then that's who you want the ad to run to. Alessandra says, oh, she's in Etsy. Very cool. She says, I am paying Etsy per, pay per click already. Eco friendly, jewelry made in fair fresh media, bold statement, colorful with modernist feel. I absolutely love that. So Etsy is completely different from Google paid ads. Uh, you could still run, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but same premise applies. If you know who your target market is and who your ideal customer is, then you could create your customer persona. Use that customer persona when you run your ads. So let's talk about your brand a little bit. So your brand has to have a look and a feel, and that's logo and colors. You're gonna choose your logos and you're gonna choose your colors based on what you want the prospective customer to feel. Uh, certain colors evoke certain emotions, trust, you know, uh, urgency, different colors, right? Uh, urgency and, and purchasing are red. Uh, trust is blue. Friendship is blue. So now you start realizing why these big brands are choosing these kind of colors. Graphic elements is how your logo looks and feels when it comes to external facing. So you might have certain uh, images or certain colors that represent your brand. For example, when you think Airbnb, you think people traveling, you think, uh, you know, people in, all over the world, you think people are smiling and happy and living in a really, really luxurious apartment or house somewhere in Colombia, somewhere in France. That's all part of the graphic elements, how they want their brand to be represented externally. Same thing with you. Anytime you put an image out there, anytime you put a color out there, does that color represent your meaning, your purpose, your values? It's really important. Now, I think more valuable than that or as valuable as that is messaging and voice. And what do I mean by that? Are you 
a button down professional company, right? If you're a button down professional company, you don't make any jokes. You're straight into the point. I mean business. You can trust me. You lower your voice. I'm here for you. You know that I'm going to take care of your money. If you're a fun, outgoing company that might be a scooter, like a scooter company, you might be playful. And so the way I always think about it is uh, email marketing used to have a chimp. It's called MailChimp for a reason. And that chimp is very playful uh, versus constant contact. It's more buttoned down. It's more professional. It's more serious. So you have to align what your brand is with the way it communicates to their customer. Very, very important piece. Okay, so Paul has a question. Paul asks us, um, I have a business 100% by referral from trust and estate attorneys. I have been told that I can advertise where trust and estate attorneys are listed. Is there a strategy? Paul, I love that. So Paul is in a very, very niche industry. I guarantee you, Paul has a slew of referrals already. But if his referrals aren't online, does anyone hear how amazing Paul is? So that's the value of having your website. That's the value of having your social media site. That's the value of having your reviews. I mean, it depends where you are in the value chain when it comes to quality. But that might even be something you could play into on Yelp. Yelp is, there's issues with the branding because that brand, if you're an executive brand, you do not want to be seen on Yelp because you're like, you know, if you have to ask, we're not for you, right? But if you still want a lot of business and you want to give a lot of traffic, Yelp is a great platform. Facebook, Google, business, great platform because people want to, the first thing they're going to do when they hear from you, Paul, is they're going to go online and they're going to Google your name and they're going to Google your business name and they're going to compare notes. They're going to see what are people saying about his service? Can I trust them? Because there's something called a touch point. And this is a terminology on the on marketing side that means how many times does my company have to touch me before I buy their product or service? Does anyone know how many times a brand has to touch you before you buy their u- or use their service? Seven. Give me a long guess. Seven. And this is a seven. Anyone else? Dos? Bueno. Google. Five. 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 Three, I love it. Google just released a study last year, 140. Wow, wow. 140 times before you purchase that product or service. So what does that mean? You consistently have to reach out to the customer and touch them. I'm here. I can help you. Let me, trust me. Hear from my friend. Hear from my family member. Hear from my past customer. See my video. Oh, that's super important. So we need to build that trust. So that's what I would recommend for you. Build or called case studies, Paul, where you show testimonials yes. of past clients that could really speak to how much you're sensitive to their needs. Because your your space is very niche. It's all about trust. It's all about can I trust this person to have the best intention in mind, not just for myself, but for like the whole estate. Yes, and, and to keep the person that just passed away in mind when we're executing that estate. So that's extremely important. If you could have other members within that family speak about your capabilities, that goes a long way for people trusting you. So when we think about branding, when we think about our friend here, uh, again, who are you, right? Who do you want to be and where do you stand? And that, this is called a brand position statement. Where do you fit in the marketplace? Who do you serve? What are you offering? What makes you distinct and unique? Maybe Pa is one of those folks that he's always going to be a straight shooter, regardless if it's going to cost him the sale, regardless if it's going to cost him the client. He doesn't care. He's always going to be honest. It's like, if you want me to manipulate the numbers and, and, and lean a certain way or, or interpret the contract a certain way, I'm not your guy. And if you want someone that, is by the books, I'm your guy. Whatever that happens to be that differentiates you from the marketplace, you want to be able to say that louder than anyone else. And that really comes down to your brand promise. And so here's an example and a position statement, and we're going to cut into a group, and then you guys can talk with each other and connect with each other and network with each other. 
So for a brand positioning statement, it's like for the audience or the who the challenge that they're having, what does my company provide and why should they use me? So here's the end result of TW totes. For working professionals who need a stylish and functional lunch bag, totes provides fashionable insulated vegan leather totes because everyone deserves a luxurious and functional lunch bag. So they're being very distinct, like they're speaking to a certain type of audience. If I'm 18, 19, 20, 21, do I really care about stylish and functional? Maybe, but if I'm 30, 35, 40, I do, most likely. So we're gonna break into a session speed it up because we're very behind. <laughs> so if yeah. you guys want, I'll present, I'll send you guys these slides later and you guys will have the recording later as well. So I might go a little bit faster. So we have the value proposition. How do we communicate? So when you think about Jorge, your touch points, right after this session is over, you're going to get this video and you're going to shoot it out to your network. That's people seeing the video. They're going to shoot it out to their network. That's people seeing the video. That's a touch point. So if, if someone like Carlos or someone like uh, Alessandra was talking about her jewelry, it's not just how many people are, are in this room, 14, 15 people in this room that heard the message. It's who we refer that message to as well. So it, Google calls it attribution. And all it means is we can't just give the person who the, the reason why you buy the item as the sole purpose why you bought the item. So in other words, you go to the store and you pick up that item. That's great, but there's a lot of things that happen beforehand that got you to buy that item. And a lot of times that we don't see as marketers or business owners that are our friends, for example, referred us, talked to us, mentioned us, another friend might have mentioned us, that's the 140 that Google on average is talking about. So how do we do that? We have to get online, we have to do promotions, we have to do social media, we have to do directories like the H HVN, we have to do online marketplaces, all great places to sell. We have to build our brand. What's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365? Your website. We want to create that website, we control it, we grow it, we understand that data. There's a lot of data coming in from the website that we can understand. Mm -hmm. Google also gives you a free Google business profile at no charge. It's what the name of your company when someone types in, I'm looking for accounting firm or real estate firm or marketing firm and your company pops up. Or they can just type in your company and your business pops up. It's a free service that Google provides called Google business. I can show it to you guys after we're done with the presentation. Now engage and influence consideration. We always want the prospective customer to evaluate our brand and gather as much information as possible. We need a website or we need content. Flyers, brochures that tell them, this is why our product, product is way better than the other person. And we always want feedback. You want to listen to the reason why the customer bought our product or why they didn't buy our product. And then we want to develop that relationship. I don't know how many of us use Uber and Lyft, but first thing they did five, seven years ago, well, actually more than that now, 10 years ago is that they gave us $20 off our next ride. And if we refer people, we get another $20 off. So that's referral business. That's a strong way to do it. But you always want to get that feedback from the customer and determine why are they buying from you? So Paul had a great comment in the last session. He said, you know, people, the, the family is not the one referring us. It's the, the actual um, attorney. attorney who needs to sell the house. They're like, I'm not a realtor, but I need to find one. And I need to find someone that gives me the highest value because my commission is based on my percentage is based on that. So they think about Paul. So Paul needs to influence that person. So how do you do that? Why did you use us? Oh, because you offered the greatest percentage of return when it comes to selling the house. You were able to increase the amount of sell that we do or, or, or money that we provide our end user, the family, and that really matters a lot to us. So that matters. Or for the jewelry business, what kind of design did you like? Was it very large? Was it petite? Was it in the middle? What kind of color? All that stuff is going to help you develop about your new product line, right? Very important stuff. So what are customers looking for? 
And we're going to get to a point when we talk about Google search, they type in the keyword, the key phrase, the Google search pops up. So we want to think about what are people searching for right now? We have a free tool that is called Google Trends. And Jorge, we could do a breakout session if you want to, or we could do this for homework because we are running up against time. And okay. this allows you to compare the different words and different phrases so you could see what's more popular. The example that we have here is yoga. There's three different types of yoga. But I remember 10 years ago, uh, there's a big paleo movement and the big keto movement with food. And people are like, I don't want to eat bread. I don't want to eat bread. I don't want to eat bread. Well, if you're a pizza parlor, are you offering keto-friendly options? Yes or no. Are you offering cauliflower crust options? Yes or no. If people are searching for that and you're not offering that, that's a missed business opportunity because you could have a new product that a lot of people will buy. So what we typically do in this section is we ask you guys to take this experience and go on Google Trends and type in different words and phrases that you think your ideal customer, and it doesn't have to be your end customer. It has to be your ideal customer. Your end customer is a person who might be using your service eventually. For us, depending on where you are in the, in, in the industry, it might be a strategic partner, what they're searching for. So Jorge, do you want to stop here or do you want to keep going? Uh, yeah, we can do, no, no, we have a... Um... We can do the, 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 the breakout room now. We're going to do the, the second pool, and then you had another 10 minutes. So okay, we can fantastic. The, the, the break now. So what is what is the pool number number two? Magali, this is something this is something very interesting because uh, we're going to ask how many Google tools do you know? Right, Magali? Okay. Which one do you use more? I mean, which one, what, which one, I know we use all the tools, right? I mean, because Google is so, so, so strong and so power, but which one you, you think you use more for all of this? Okay. So there's no doubt that the most of these issues is email. And yeah, it makes sense because email, Robert, is, uh, is, is the first one with all, 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 all kinds of emails, right? But yeah, we're, talking, we're, yeah, we're competing with someone. So now we're going to go to the breakout rooms. Once again, it's going to be eight minutes. You get, uh, please take the first 30 seconds to, to use yourself. You have the timer and um, let's go to the discussion. Paul, how, how is that going? The breakout room. Very what? nice. No, it was great. Man. Very nice to meet all of your participants. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's the way to do, to do networking as well, right? Always networking is. Uh, I love networking. Yes, I know you. You you are a pro in networking. We we met each other in networking. And yes, we have, <laughs> we have a relationship because of networking. Yes, That's exactly what we were talking about. Thank you, Robert. Okay, so you have ten more minutes, and then we we we, we, we wrap go. it up. Okay, so let's just talk about communication and sharing values. And so I'm gonna go through this very quickly. Uh, we want to always use content. Uh, you know who's really good at this in this room? Our friend Hector. He knows how to repurpose content like no other. Hector Rocha is like the master when it comes to this. Uh, so inspirational, very helpful. Um, where are your channels? Once you create the content, you get it out to as many people as you want. This video, social media, email, YouTube, podcasting, blogs, websites, all of it. Get it out. <laughs> get there's 140 touch points, right? Um, we're sharing, not selling. Very clear distinction. We're not trying to push our clients. We're trying to inform our clients. Hey, by the way, here's 5% off. By the way, here's how you sell more. By the way, here's how you keep warm. Whatever it is, you're always sharing, not selling. No one wants a pushy sales rep. That that Those days are you know long gone, 37 years ago, 37 years ago. 
um, developing relationships. You're solving the problem, right? You guys are entrepreneurs. You guys are business owners. You guys work for big multinational corporations or your own company. You guys are helping people go from 6% to 12% return on investment, 12% to 20% return on investment. You're solving problems. So you want to build that relationship and help them understand how you're helping them. Uh, so let's talk about case study. Tracy and Danny, Boston couple, realized, hey, people love, 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 love cheesecake, carrot cake, mm -hmm. cupcakes, but they spoil very quickly. Let's develop a new way of doing this. And they created the Wickedly Good Cupcakes in a jar. Absolutely love it. So what they're really good at is getting feedback. And once the customer comes in, they keep their customer buying more and more cupcakes. So how do you do this? Calls to action. They land on your website. What do you want them to do? You want them to call you? You want them to buy from you? You want them to give you their email? Understand exactly what you want your customer to do once they land on your website, once they give you a call, once they download your white paper, PDF, brochure. Um, what are different calls to action? Emails, form completion, downloading the content, trial run, buy two, get one free, you know, consultation. Jorge is probably, he makes his money on consultations. He touches people three times and they open up their checkbook. So I, I need to hang out with this guy because <laughs> this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> Placing an item in the cart. If they place the item in the cart, we want to make sure that we give them an email. Uh, this is Alessandra. Alessandra, the moment they move their, your, your jewelry to the cart, you want to make sure that you shoot them an email. Hey, you forgot this. Or you remark it to them. Really important. Uh, so all, time means everything. It's our pain point. Not when you want us to buy it, but when we need to buy it. So think about when is the best time to discount. Fat Friday, Cyber Monday. Or look at yourselves over the week. What is my best selling day? And why are those the best selling days? So the cupcake company sells amazingly on the weekends. It makes sense. Families, barbecues, picnics. And so how do you get them to actually buy from you? How many clicks does it take to buy it from Amazon? One click. How many clicks does it take to buy from Best Buy? A thousand clicks, right? So you want to streamline that purchasing way or the call to action. Don't make them fill out all the information. Quick and to the point, I click, I buy. Or I click, I got your email. I click, I got your phone number, and I could call you. You could connect your website to Google Analytics and get a better understanding of what traffic is coming into the website. Really, really amazing tool, and it's free. Alessandra, I'm looking at you. You need to understand who your customer is. You need to understand how many customers comes into your store, how many customers come out of your store, and how many customers actually buy from your store. 100 people come in, 10 people buy, or one person buys. That means we have to drive a minimum of 100 people to buy from us. That's what you want to get down to, that kind of analytical KPI, key performance indicator. A customer conversion online deals, Google Ads. I'm not going to dwell on this too much, so I'm just going to skip it. Loyalty, you want to keep them coming back. Referral codes, you want to keep them giving email codes. You want to keep them coming back and building the trust and the loyalty saying, hey, we love you. Here's 5% for buying our product or our service. Stay in touch. Talk about why they want me to use you. I used to get letters from my clients writing me, hey, we love your service. I used to use that and post it on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my LinkedIn. Same thing. When, the, when I bought something, I used to ship them items and I used to write personal letters. That means a lot to people, especially right now. Christmas is coming up. New Year's is coming along. Sending them a letter. Thank you so much for your business. We love you. Next year, we're going to hit 10%, even if you didn't hit your numbers. They are very forgiving. If you, I had a lady, uh, she sells the bags. Viva Bags in California. Amazing lady. And she's like, Roberto, I didn't pay this much to get from zero to 0.5. I want 10. And I was like, el año que viene. Like, we'll do it. And she was like, all right, I sign up to all your services now, <laughs> right? They, they understand us. We're human. They understand that nothing's perfect. Communicate, stay in touch. Shh, be I mean, I'm not going to tell you to be vulnerable, but what I will tell you is communicate to build that loyal customer following so they could trust you because they want to know who you are. You know, they want to understand you. Um, VIP, exclusive offers, discounts, and personalized programs always go a long way. Oh, you like chocolate? 
here's our chocolate month cherry cakes or chocolate cupcakes. Uh, for Alessandra, it's February. Here's our February uh, Valentine's Day. March, here's our spring line. April, here's our, our summer line. So you want to keep building that rapport. Um, Paul, I, I don't want to get morbid on this, but you know when your peaks and valleys are in your industry, and you know very well when you should be shooting out those emails because you know, okay, we're about to start that peak and we're going to go through that valley. So you need to start developing out these things or for existing lawyers that you have, hey, you refer some business over this way, we'll give you 2%, no questions asked. Really important. Encourage customer advocacy. Come back, leave reviews, crush that like button, share, promote. We want to get to 140 so that people continue to use our products. Uh, and then ask them for reviews. So quick overview, who can be your advocate? Who could be your champion? Your customers, obviously, your employers, obviously, and your third-party partners. Alessandra, I'm looking at you. Jorge, I'm looking at you. Uh, Paul, I'm looking at you. They're all your partners. They're all strategic partners that can promote your brand and speak and sing your praise. All right, guys, with that, thank you so much. Very quickly, reach, engage convert, and most importantly, sustain. It's more valuable to keep a customer than to acquire a new customer. Way easier to do. Keep that customer coming back and you guys will become the next Bill Gates, Elon Musk, without the attitude, and we're all gonna love you. There's a lot of free classes online that you can learn on your own speed. Uh, Grow with Google on air. We have a, an app called Google Primer app. And that is it for me. Thank you so much. I would love to ask you for a small favor. And that is, here's a survey that I would appreciate if you guys fill out and you tell Google, hey, Google, we absolutely love Roberto. Have him come back or never bring that guy back. He was terrible. <laughs> but with that, thank you so much, guys. Los, los aprecio. Aquí okay. estoy. Si tienen cualquier preguntita. Y Jorge, la pantalla es tuya. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, okay. I think there is a question, no, in the chat. Magalita. Well, in the chat, there is a question from Alexandra, or let me see. Sí, Alexandra, uh, la any question? Sí, any question? Right. Say, Alexandra, a question for Roberto. Google is asking me to claim my business. Should I claim even if, yes, Alejandra, Alexandra, claim your business. 100% claim your business. When everyone's typing jury by Temecula, you want your business to pop up. You don't need to have a brick and mortar company. You're going to tell Google, this is my coverage area. This is the area that I cover, all of California or only Temecula. Or you can list the cities or the states. It's your choice. Google, all they care about is being able to be found online. Very important. So yes, claim your business. Okay. We did and hired creative solutions to help me with the connection to the uh, Claim your business. That's a long story long. <laughs> Any other Thank questions? You. Any other questions? I, I have one question, Robert. Uh, okay, we have one, one more. Okay. Uh, okay. I have a question, Robert. You 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 have been so 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 nice coming to 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 talk to us. Uh, and uh, my question is how we can help you. You gave your time, you you taught us a lot of things. So how can we help you? As yes. a group, as people here, how? Jorge, muy fácil la cosa, very simple. I want you guys to reshare this video with someone that you think will benefit from this video. That's it. If you okay. guys do that, I will be beyond happy. Okay, okay, thank you, Robert. Uh, what we can do, though, is we can send an email. We have 40 registration today. And I know, you know, because it was on the 16th, you know, a lot of people, you know, the 16 is a very complicated December and, you know, but these 40 people are, are, are very interested and about this because they register. So I think that is a good idea. We can email to, to them some of the video from Google. Maybe we can email to them this video that you have been talking. And at the same time, we can also promote your, your, your agency that you deserve from us. So it's okay we do that. 100%. Okay, so it's gonna die. It, Magali, let's do it. Let's send okay to the all the people that registered for, for this. We're gonna edit this video. We we'll say to Robert, you say it's okay. I'm gonna put this in line and in our YouTube. 